Jeff. Thank you to Lieutenant Governor Stratton. You can see that every day I work next to powerful women of color. Yeah. Yeah. Like Juliana Stratton, like Sol Flores, like so many people in our administration who helped to lead our state in the right direction. So thank you very much to the Lieutenant Governor. I also want to point out something that you may have all noticed. Sylvia standing here with me two feet away was lobbying me in front of all of you for 20% more in the budget. So that is power right there. thank all of you. It is a real pleasure to be here with the Latino Policy Forum, especially on the you know 10th anniversary of Latino Unity Day. Uh, the need for accountability inside and outside of government to ensure that our Latino families can thrive has grown even greater than ever before. I'm proud that uh, from the beginning of my uh, governorship, I have made advancing equity and justice a cornerstone of my governorship, work that wouldn't be possible without the leadership of not just the Latino Policy Forum, from whom I have stolen staff, thank you very much, but also from all of you and the organizations that you represent. Thank you so much for being partners in this work. On that note, I want to echo Lieutenant Governor's uh, appreciation of so many organizations. I'll just quickly run through them again because you do so much great work. Of course, the Latino Caucus, thank you for your partnership. Yeah. Illinois Hispanic Association of State Employees, ICER, the Illinois Latino Council. Yeah, you should cheer for yourself. Uh, the Latino, Illinois Latino Council on Higher Education, the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and so many other organizations that have come together to make this day possible. From Aurora to Chicago, Metro East to Rockford, your advocacy changes lives for the better, and it makes it easier for us, your allies in government, to keep taking on big challenges that are facing Latino families across our state. And to all of the groups and individuals who are here for this momentous occasion and who are in the halls of the Capitol today, thank you. Thank you for sharing your voices, for being a powerful voice advocating our agenda with our lawmakers. I insisted on having one of the most robust census counts in the nation so that you couldn't be denied any longer. And even if nationally, in part because of Donald Trump, there may have been an undercount, I want you to know that uh, the count as it is, nearly one in five Illinois residents identifies as Hispanic or Latino. Let's not forget that. The fuller the count, the better. The fuller the count, the better. And the fuller the count than ever is what we have recorded, and that's real progress. In this state, we have Hispanic people whose origin stories stretch from indigenous South America to the U.S.-Mexico border, from the European continent to the African slave trade. Latino Illinoisans bring with them an array of foods and traditions and beliefs and language. And all of them, every single one, deserves an Illinois where their families can thrive. It's no secret that the pandemic over the last two years has brought new challenges to the mission of shaping that Illinois. Exploiting historical inequities, placing new burdens on the backs of frontline workers, and revealing the unequal health care system that Latino families face across our state. These are challenges that demand even greater urgency than ever before to ensure safety and stability for all of our families, to support the health and wellness of our residents, and to prioritize the fight for equity. Overcoming these obstacles has been a guiding light for me, for my administration, and our work over the last two to three years. From the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, I directed my team to operate with an eye toward Illinoisans whose communities are most affected by the virus. In the early months of 2020, when we established about 200 public testing sites around the state, one in three was in a community with a Latino population at or greater than our state average. I've restored funding for our Illinois Welcoming Center since I came into office. 
and we use them as a hub for free resources for our immigrant communities, many of whom are also members of the Latino community. That's everything from emergency funds to provide food and necessities, to enrollment in SNAP and WIC benefits, to translation services, to testing and vaccine location information. We worked to keep the roofs over the heads of struggling families and the lights on at small businesses throughout our pandemic stability grant programs. And thanks to leaders in the General Assembly, and I want to look especially at Senator Villa and so many others who have been leaders. Leader Hernandez, yes, of course, who I met with yesterday. Thank you, Leader Hernandez, for your leadership. I want to say thanks to them. Illinois became the first state in the nation to extend health coverage to undocumented seniors. And as you know, that wasn't just about doing it during the pandemic, it's forever. It's forever. When it comes to spreading the word, when it comes to spreading the word about these resources, my administration couldn't have done it alone. And I want to recognize the collaborations of the entire Latino caucus in advocating for the safety of Latino communities. Leader Aaron Ortiz, Senator Christina Castro, and of course Senator Karina Villa, as well as a few individuals who have been incredible voices for justice in helping with outreach in their districts. Of course, Senator Selena Villanueva on public health. Representative Fred Crespo on education. Representative Delia Ramirez on housing. The entire Latino caucus has done outstanding work in communicating and distributing support for Latino communities statewide, and I thank you. This legislative session, I'm very proud to be working alongside these great individuals and so many other leaders in the General Assembly to continue to lift up our working families. As today's program so aptly recognizes, we have to go beyond recovery to truly shape the state that our residents deserve. That means building on the progress and bringing economic opportunity to Illinois residents. In my first weeks in office, if you can remember way back 38 years ago before the pandemic, uh, in my first weeks in office, we raised the minimum wage to $15. And that, and that let many working families across the state spend a little more time together with their families instead of logging 70 hours a week just to make ends meet. We've made college more affordable. And I've proposed another $120 million for MAP scholarships. And that'll bring the total to over $600 million, fulfilling a promise that I made as a candidate for governor, that we would increase support for people wanting to go to college by 50%. That's money that will support at least 24,000 more students, including those pursuing short-term programs, certificates, and, uh, and other short sorry, one-year programs, for example, uh, at community colleges so they can get a better job, earn a better wage. We're helping to start and build minority-owned enterprises, creating a small business loan fund focused on entrepreneurs of color, and now that the courts are beginning to approve licensing, we're finally able to implement the cannabis legalization framework that is the most equity-centric in the nation. These measures, paired with our aggressive investment in attracting entrepreneurs, will open doors to people in all of our communities as they work toward their dreams. We're building on our work to ensure diversity through all levels of government. We've made great strides in increasing Latino appointments to boards and commissions, and in recruiting and retaining agency staff, now finally paying them for their bilingual skills. And we're offering, yeah. And we're offering more support and protections to our immigrant communities, expanding language accessibility across state agencies, and building on our efforts to strengthen the Trust Act. Already, I signed legislation taking immigration status off the table in all state procedures where it has no relevance, putting greater teeth into those protections through the Attorney General's office and making Illinois the second state in the nation where all local governments had to end partnerships with ICE by the end of 2021. <laughs> but these advancements are just that. 
at their advancements, their progress in a much longer journey toward true justice. Our work isn't done, as you all know. We will not stop until we ensure that every Illinoisan has the opportunity to thrive. For as long as I'm governor, Illinois will take steps every day to become a state that all people, from new arrivals to those who are longtime residents, can be proud to call home. We should be a leader in that. We should be a leader in the entire nation. We are getting there, and it's because of all of you. Once again, I want to thank you. I want to thank the Latino Policy Forum, all the organizations represented here today, everyone here that is working to pursue the kind of state that we all want now and into the future. Thank you again for having me today.